Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Chaos Community Meeting, May 31st, 2022. I'm Elizabeth, the community manager here. So um, that's why I'm the one facilitating this meeting, in case you're wondering. Um, we always say, don't need to have your cameras on. You can leave it off. Just join however you feel like you want to join. That's how we roll here. Um, yeah, what am I doing? Sharing my screen. Maybe. There it is. I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, if you need the minutes again, let me know. I can drop them in to the chat. If you don't, that's fine. That means you're in here already. That's good. So add your names if you can. Look at Matt's lovely garden already coming, coming up, coming up. Like that's amazing. It's pretty early in the season, right? It is pretty early in the season, but rain and warm weather, it's a good combo. So by the end of summer, that shed in the back will be completely covered, like unobservable. Wow. So keep you posted. Thank you. What, like what, with what? <laughs> like uh, what's so covering it? There's, a, there's something called Joe Pie Weed back by yeah. the shed. And then there's also a butterfly bush back by the shed and there's goldenrod back by the shed and they're all quite large. Love it. Yes, 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 yes. I have had all of those things in my garden in the past um, and I will put them back in my new garden when I move. So love that you have that. That's awesome. awesome. And then I, t I take pictures of the butterflies, but I don't know if you will do that. But you should. because I do. Some. I take pictures of the insects. It's pretty light right now. I've seen some swallowtails and some yeah. some monarchs and some painted ladies. Those yeah. are the that I've seen. But love it. Okay. Um, everybody else looks like they're doing pretty good. Yeah, my son graduated from high school, so many tears. I've just been crying for days. I'll get over it. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'll all work out. Okay, let's get going because we have a short meeting today because we are, we do need to meet with Chaos Con peeps. So if you're on that committee, please stick around. This meeting will um, stop at the half past time, whatever time it is for you. About 25 minutes from now, we'll stop this meeting. So let's get to it. Um, just wanted to remind everybody that the CFP is closed now, but you can register for Chaos Con. Europe. And it is part of the Open Source Summit Europe. So you will have to register with them if you want to come to Chaos in person, ChaosCon in person. We will have live streaming um, of the event for free. I believe that's our plan to do is what we've done in the past. So um, hopefully we will make that happen again so that everybody can attend who wants to attend and who won't be there in person. Um, I believe we settled at $50 for the day, for the half day. It's a half day event. $50, Matt is nodding his head, yes. Um, so it will be just an add-on at the end of your, if you register for the Open Source Summit at Europe, um, you'll see at the end, you can add on different uh, events and ChaosCon is one of them. So it'll be $50. Um, any questions about any of that stuff or comments, anything before we move on? I have a, go ahead, Sophia. Sorry, I cut you off. Um, I was just going to say, I know we were still looking for sponsors, I assume. Is there any sort of link or something that I can promote in my channels to see if people are interested? Yeah, you bet. We do have a prospectus, and I'll get the link, and I'll put it in the chat. So thanks for um, that. Is there a timeline on when you want to be done with that? No. Um, I mean, the reality is, is we have enough dollars to cover. You know what I mean? So then like any additional support just kind of goes in. It's almost kind of like just a, a moving account or a rolling account at this point. So any support is really greatly appreciated, but there's no real urgency. Thanks. The link to the prospectus is on the event website, by the way, as well. Did you drop it in the chat, Kevin, if you have it handy? The link to the website or the link to the prospectus? The prospectus. Oh, somebody did it. It's in the middle. Or no, that was the program. That's the call. Uh, just a sec, let me. 
And then I was just going to say, has anybody looked at registering for OSS EU? Like last time we looked, ChaosCon wasn't on there. So I could go through the process and just yeah, see. I haven't, it. Gone it was, it. I haven't gone through it and registered yet. Okay. <clears throat> it was supposed to be on by the end of last week, but they were all like a lot of the folks were in Valencia at KubeCon. And a lot of people that got was keeping, that was, that was kind of making things busy. <laughs> well, I heard from a number of people that a lot of people got stuck. There were a lot of flight cancellations after KubeCon. So okay. that probably delayed things as well. I put the link in the uh, document. Thanks, Kevin. There we go. There it is. So if you work for a company that does sponsor events from time to time, um, this is a great thing to pass along to those folks. And the, the registration link is is active now as well on the website. Awesome. Oh, it is? Great. That's good. It's good, good news. So if anybody does register for Open Source Summit Europe and does not see ChaosCon as an add-on, please let us know and we'll follow up. Or if you do see it, let us know and now we know. Let us say it. We'll be really happy. Smiles. Okay. Any other questions about anything for ChaosCon Europe? All right. I was going to say, I have um, questions, but if we're doing a, a separate meeting at the end, I can save them for just the corporate. OK. OK. Perfect. And for those of you who did submit something, um, the speaker notifications are going out June 23rd. And we will post the schedule on July 7th. So just so you have a frame of reference for how long you have to wait for those things. And we're just following along with the um, Open Source Summit Europe timeline as well. So if you submitted something to them, you'll find out on the same day, which I don't know if is good, but it seems like it seems like a good idea at the time. So yeah. we don't know. Yeah, no, it's it's consistent. It keeps people from having to track all these different deadlines, I think. Yeah, I agree. It's hard. All right. So last week, we also um, had uh, to postpone a discussion about repurposing the chaos cast um, episodes that we've already published into maybe other things like um, Venya has great ideas around that. So Venya, I'm gonna let you kind of take take this and run with it for a minute. Uh, yeah, sure. So um, this is more being brought up here as a way to funnel into a larger discussion that's being had on the Slack and among the chaos cast uh, team. Um, so Georg is actually going to be on vacation for like the next three weeks. Uh, so we're kind of having the deeper discussions more asynchronously. We are also true to form because it's about chaos cast going to have a chaos community podcast about um, like how we're going to be covering metrics and stuff like that, uh, which is kind of developed into what kind of new media formats do we have for covering the use of different metrics. And alongside that, how are we going to repurpose content that's already been done in Chaos Cast um, to update all of that information, bring in metrics that uh, deserve a little bit more media coverage, but may not necessarily have that same media coverage, um, and give people an easier gateway or entry point um, to individual pieces of metrics, models, and other people that we would like to introduce them to. Um, so it's kind of taken on a life of its own for this conversation. Um, what you need to know here and now is that uh, Chaos Cast is freely open and available for people to use and spread each of the podcasts, but that doesn't mean that it's easy to do that. So the idea is uh, creating infrastructure that makes that easier. Uh, for socially constructed online, which is my uh, private consultancy, I'm planning on um, actually like cutting up some of the podcasts uh, to create a new shorter form piece of content that will flow back into Chaos Cast. And a portion of that is going to involve auditing um, the uh, current Chaos Casts for information and value, and then writing blogs or doing videos on the YouTube channel, uh, that kind of stuff to repurpose it. 
So um, we are hoping to have other opportunities and other options for reusing that content. Uh, so right now it's just a, we are open to ideas. What would chaos as a community like this to look like? Um, and do you want to help in repurposing or splintering that content? So that's the general idea, uh, kind of opening it to a discussion now, um, if needed. So thanks, Vanya. Um, do you have an example of like what you're talking about? Not to like prove what you're talking about. So just so I can kind of see it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, Tear It Up has recently been doing some uh, larger podcasts, right? So it's like an hour long conversation with a person. But if there's a particular nugget of information in that hour long podcast, they'll snip the three minutes that that conversation takes, uh, overlay it over a YouTube video. And then it's like a three minute talk excerpt of that conversation that is shared on the Instagram, TikTok, and social media. Um, so it repurposes and then says, if you want to listen to the full podcast, come here right. to see the full okay. hour. So okay. that's an example of content splintering. Okay. Uh, okay. Content repurposing is us uh, just basically taking that hour long podcast, condensing it into half an hour and publishing it on the Chaos Cast YouTube channel to be like, we're revisiting this conversation. Um, and then an update is more true to form us contacting the original people on that uh, podcast and then saying, hey, so a year ago, you had this amazing project for Acquia, for instance, um, and it looks like it's related to DEI. So now a year and a half later, let's revisit that. And then we'll splice the old podcast into the new podcast to be like, so you said two years ago this, how is that going now? And it'll allow us to update and re-invite some guests and users. So do you, I like this. And it's funny because it, I think it kind of aligns with what we're doing with metrics. <laughs> it's actually yeah. revisiting our metrics that were created years and years ago sometimes um, and exactly. just re reflecting on them. So do you think that this will um, like have an impact, and I don't mean in a bad way, but like have an impact on doing new podcasts? Do you think like the effort should be put on on this? You know what I mean? And just doing because in the from a metrics perspective, we are kind of saying let's hold off on maybe creating new metrics. If some are in the queue, no problem, like see those to fruition. But a lot of the effort is about reflecting on our existing set of metrics to make them better. Do you have a thought on how those two would be related? Not the metrics in the podcast, but new podcasts with what you're proposing? Yeah, um, well, I think the most important part is when we go back and look at the old content, we are using it to revitalize and create new content. So I don't think we should like one for one switch from brand new content to older content. I think that we need to have a hybridized model and we need to um, kind of have this notion of a new podcast once every two weeks and then a revitalized, renewed, refreshed version of that podcast in another given week. And that will create more content for users, but it's actually less work for us. Um, and I think that if we maintain that model, we'll be able to continue with the new content that we've been doing while also augmenting the workflow um, with those older podcasts. Does that make sense? I, I think we should have a hybrid model of new and reused content. It does. I, I wonder, Elizabeth, I know that arranging podcasts is quite a bit of work, like coordinating them. So mm -hmm. and how, what would you say your schedule is right now for like new podcasts? For me? Yeah. For the new one? Oh, we do one every, every two weeks we release a new one. Okay. So that means like a constant making sure we have some in the pipeline because they take a little time, you know, to yeah. schedule, to edit and to post. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it can be kind of stressful. I'm, I'm glad that we switched to the biweekly model because it used to be every week and that was like super stressful. Um, so it's a little less stressful now, but it still is kind of a lot. So okay. I would be super happy if we integrated um, other things instead of trying to co continually keep this like new, um, yeah. new thing going. Cause we've been keeping it going for a long time, like a couple of years now. Right. And so it's like, whoo, 
yeah, who else do we got? You know, and there's only so many hours in a week, and <laughs> so do, hours do we in get a any? Do we get any stats on listenership, like over the, over the time that we've done it? Like, I mean, yeah, it's it's like fireside. Yeah. How are we trending there? I would have to look, but I can. I think when we sent information to Richard Millington at Fever B uh, in preparation for his, we were looking at an average of about 100 to 150 listens. Okay. Uh, we did have a demographic breakdown, but it was very, very simplified. Like Fireside is talking about like where these people are coming from and what the source metric was. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do honestly think that if we're going to repurpose that content a big uh, benefit and also important um, feature of that is that we need to have more granular uh, analytics and metrics for it, which the benefit to that is that the repurposed content should increase that 150 to like, I would say a three times ROI. So we're looking at 350 average listeners uh, would be like just a goal to throw out there. But one of the important things about that is we'll be updating that profile and then we can start sending that to sponsors, to underwriters, to uh, new people who are going to join the podcast. And we'll be able to prove the value of the podcast and in so doing, increase membership and provide um, an additional opportunity for new people to come on. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that should be a primary goal. I really, really like the idea of taking some of our metrics and um, doing kind of like a quick deep dive of them an expl yeah. explanation. I really like that. I I wanted to do that when I first started chaos as a community <laughs> manager. I was like, that would be great to do a quick video. And I never yeah. did any of them. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I would really love it if somebody would do it because I think that would be really helpful for our community too, that just want like, just tell me how to use this metric. Just tell me what this metric is about in three minutes. Like I can't, I don't want to read through this whole thing. Like, just tell me. And especially when we start getting into like more metrics models and they could be a little complicated, like having just like a five, 10 minute discussion about them would be fantastic, I think. So yeah. Um, and my question for you, Venya, sorry to interrupt you, is is who, did you say you were going to be the one to like go through and edit these and chop them out and all of that? Because I can imagine that would be a lot of work. Yeah, that feather tails pretty nicely actually. Um, so the big thing about that, and this is like where like the most important disclosure comes out is that for socially constructed done online, I'm moving from a consultancy model to an e-course and learning model. And a big part of that is going to be a YouTube channel all about community management. And I'm going to have separate from chaos cast, a, um, YouTube channel that's all about every other week covering a theory for community management. And then the next week covering a metric or a model or something from the general zeitgeist of community. So it won't just be chaos, but I plan on covering actual chaos metrics and it'll actually be like a video review as if you were look, looking up a product on Amazon before you bought it. Uh, so it'll be like reviewing a new phone, except it'll be like reviewing a metric. So this is for my personal business, right, on YouTube. Um, but that also means that that infrastructure and that model can actually be used and adapted for chaos as well. And the work that I'm doing in Socially Constructed can also apply to Chaos Cast. And I would also recommend opening that up for other people to do the same, where they review the models that they're actually using, and then you can simul post that on YouTube. So it may not be a good idea to have like a full one hour chaos cast about a specific metric. Perhaps it's a better idea to do a smaller YouTube video and then link to an interview with the creators of that metric. And now you have two pieces of content for one. That makes sense. Yeah, I think our, <clears throat> my only question is, um, you know, I think we should have some kind of, I guess it's more of a statement. We should probably have some kind of sustainability plan around this like i don't think okay. you can do it forever <laughs> um so yeah. i don't know if it just if this work just mingles in with the podcast work or if it's like a distinct thread it sounds like it might be yeah and to be honest like the work that i'm gonna do on this for chaos has to be somewhat selfish on my end as well like mm -hmm. i'm gonna be covering the chaos casts that i am personally on first, because it's also going to be working for socially constructed. But 
if we want to expand on this, it's got to sustainably scale for other people to be able to do the same um, for information content that they're a part of, or for our guests and our users to be broadly encouraged to cut up that information for their own companies. I think this is great. Um, we only have five minutes left. So uh, is it okay if we continue this asynchronously or continue this next week? Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a larger conversation. So I invite everyone to have that larger conversation in Slack or connect with the Chaos Cast team. Um, and then we can kind of further the discussion. I know that there's been some discussion about uh, Chaos's social media presence as well. Um, mm -hmm. So you can probably reach out to that team for it too. That team being Ruth. <laughs> I think Ruth the team of Ruth. <laughs> Um, well, I guess that also now includes me because this yeah. discussion is happening, but yeah. I thought Ruth was on here. I think she left. Um, so yeah, and that's all happening in the general channel. Is that right? Yes, for now. Okay. Awesome. 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 Thank you so much, Vanya, for bringing all this up. I think it's really great ideas. Um, it will really help everybody in the future. Okay. Um, let's jump ahead really quick because we just had a few other things to talk about in the five minutes we have left. Um, we have not done working group updates for a while, so we need to kind of get those going again. Um, let's do DEI next week if we have a volunteer who wants to give just a quick status update of what the working group's been working on. Yeah, I can do that. I mean, between, <laughs> yes, I can do that. Okay, Matt G to give update. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Um, the next item we were just talking about evolution. I believe that's going to be kind of a long conversation. <laughs> um, Sean, Possibly, Kevin, yeah. do you want to start this? Do you want to save it till next time? What do you want to do let's, about that? Let's save it till next time. I think I think you okay. can keep and we're running low on time. Okay. Um, the next one on here says mentoring meeting. Who put that on here? Uh, I did. I okay. should say meetings maybe. So. My dog, my dog is going under a bed. So, um, so basically, it's going to be really loud for a second. But um, so there are some some people who maybe weren't selected for uh, like season of docs or, uh, or yeah, summer of code or outreach, but still want to participate in the you know kind of like be involved in the programs as they're moving forward. So just making sure that we. Um, Kind of publicly announce when we can when like part of that meeting would be open more broadly i know we talked about not having every meeting open because it some of them might be very specific in supporting a, a mentee you know what i mean like they may be really pointed things that need to be addressed but i think some of the meetings could be more publicly available like here's the agenda that we're kind of setting for the summer here are our goals for the next two months or one month well you know whatever it might be and if people would like to participate um i think that's okay so really that that's what that's about so just for the mentors to think about how you might have a publicly available meeting around your mentor mentee projects so like sean you know if you're doing like mentoring for Google <laughs> Summer of Code. Yeah. Some of those meetings might be private between you and the students, but some of them might be public and just how how you make those public ones available to others who may want to join who aren't necessarily part oh, of that's the program. A, yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. Um, I think it would just be a question of publishing them on the chaos calendar. We're still in the getting to know you period on Google Summer of yeah. Code. So I won't, um, I won't have any uh before, not right away anyway yeah before yeah. it start i probably won't have any before it starts but um uh, once it starts i do tend to re i tend to routinely meet with individuals like the first couple of weeks and then make it more of a public kind of like get all the people that are part of some mentoring circle together um, okay okay uh so yeah the, and i think making those available to the public is like just letting people know, would you suggest a meeting or an announcement in the newsletter for those then? Yeah, maybe when we set them up in the calendar, yeah. you know, for the X number of projects we have. Because I just know that there are some students who were not selected who still have an interest in participating. Okay. 
And if um, if you have specific people in mind and know their time zones, maybe just shoot them to me on Slack. And okay, I'll just make sure when I schedule things, I try to accommodate as many different time zones as I can. That sounds like a good idea. Okay, I think for the uh, for the knowledge base and the community handbook uh, projects, I think that the web content meeting already serves that that function. Okay, great. Yeah, that seems fair. And so like, even in that case, Kevin, like no need to add a new meeting, but maybe we could just make that we meeting when we announce these, you know what I mean? Is like, here are all the meetings associated with the different projects, just saying. And, and open to everyone. And then if we need to have individual meetings with, yeah. the, with the mentors or task specific meetings, we can, yeah. we can schedule them from, from that meeting or, uh, or asynchronous one. Perfect. Awesome. All right. And then one quick note, the member summit RFP is out August 7th deadline. Okay. And right. this is for just Linux people, right? Linux Foundation. Um, yeah, I mean, no, we yeah. I think your organization has to be a member, but I don't know. If the, I don't know if you're prohibited from submitting. I have to look closer at the rules. The Linux Foundation is so huge anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It used to yeah, be. Yeah, this list of topics is like pretty much everything <laughs> ever involved in tech at all. Like just, yeah. I mean, I when is I, it? It's the, the 8th to the 10th of November this year. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, attendance is invite only, but I think anyone can uh, yeah. submit a proposal yep. for a presentation. I feel like they put this in here just for us. I could be wrong, but. It feels pretty specific. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know that. I we knew that. <laughs> <laughs> if only we knew somebody. Right? <laughs> okay. So if you would like to submit, there, that's how you do that. And it's in Squaw Valley this time. Nice. Oh, yay. Or Squaw Creek is what they're calling it. But I, wow. think that's the, I think that's the same place that we were headed before the pandemic in 2020. It was. And if there's snow, we should have a ski day. I don't yeah. know if November will bring snow or not. I'm not. I will have an uh, ale in the pub day while y'all are skiing. That's what I do. Perfect. So, so I, I know we're not we're not doing a chaos con around the uh, open source summit North America, uh, sure. but is that uh, do we have any kind of chaos -y presentations that are? That are going that way. When, when is the? It, I assume the RFP is out for for that one as well. Yeah. When I know Sean. Close. Which one? OSSNA. In Austin. Oh. Yeah. I mean the the well the the that's I don't know what you're saying because we've already submitted talks and they're going to happen down there. Yeah, he, he's just asking what chaos ish. Yeah. Kind of like a list of chaos. -ish. Oh, that would be good to produce that. I haven't made the effort to produce it. I know Sophia is giving talks and there's some other folks. Yeah, me, I, I'm giving a talk about open source, uh, creating DEI, centering DEI in your open source event. It's based on the badging initiative. Um, and I know you are too, right? I think Sean? It just be an action. Not item. based on the, not based on the badging initiative, but. Right, 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 right. Okay. So we'll pull those, we'll pull that list together and we'll put it somewhere for everybody. Uh, okay, let's shut this, shut it down. Let's shut it down. And we will uh, meet with chaos con committee planning people. If you are on that team, please stick around because we have, we do have some stuff to talk about. If you're not on there, you are free to go. And we see you next time. Stick around. If, if we, uh, if we're looking at CFPs, by the way, we will need to